So how does inflation affect you, your life, your finances, your decisions, your goals, your objectives? We live in a world right now where inflation is going out of control. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of lack of education about what inflation is and how it impacts you. For this video, I'm going to get into this. I just got done filming it. I got into everything you need to know about how inflation is going to impact your life, how it impacts your future, your potential for financial independence and retirement and all these different things. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, you hit the bell, that way you're notified as I'm doing this series and you're made aware of every single video because I believe without financial freedom, there is no freedom at all. And without understanding the concepts that I'm teaching in this series, you are not going to be able to actually be able to make the decisions that have a positive impact in your financial results in your life. So that's it. I'll see you in the video. Let me know at the end. If you have any questions, comment in the comment section below and we'll see you there. Hey, what's going on Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. In this video, we are continuing the Understanding Your Money series and we're going to be talking about what is inflation? How does it affect you? Obviously, look at the world we're in right now. Inflation is becoming a hot topic. I think there's a lot of sens sensationalization about inflation. There's a lot of fear around inflation because sure, it has a big impact on you, on your lifestyle, on uh, what your money is actually worth with you. But I thought I'd take a couple minutes and, and go through and try to explain exactly what is inflation, a little bit about how it's caused, but ultimately some different ways to think about inflation uh, and how to deal with it at the same time for you to be able to have a little bit more education about how it impacts you and your personal finances. So let's just, let's just kind of like jump right to the board. So ultimately, what is inflation, right? Inflation is simply uh, the expansion of our currency, really is what it, what it comes down to. As, as inflation happens, what happens is like we have more dollars chasing the same amount of goods uh, is, is typically how it happens. And so that makes it so our money is worth less and then worth less and worth less. And a lot of people say that's when it becomes worthless. Uh, because since the institution of the Federal Reserve, the United States dollar has actually lost 98% of its purchasing power. Now, purchasing power is simply saying, what is my dollar going to buy me, right? Like, so uh, let's really simplify this. If we go back, like my parents, my dad, he told me stories about when he was growing up, he could go to the store and buy a Coke for a nickel, right? And so now you go to the store and you buy a Coke for three bucks and that is inflation. That is purchasing power of our dollar. A dollar used to be able to buy, you know, 20 Cokes now takes $3 to buy one Coke, right? And so that is the purchasing power. And so inflation erodes the purchasing power. It reduces the purchasing power of our money. And that's really important to understand. So, so the, the federal reserve, it's important on, to know this has a target rate of 2% inflation. That is the goal. Now, when we understand how the government prints money, the fact that since 1971, we have not had any standard like the gold standard, keeping and holding our politicians and bankers accountable, even though the Federal Reserve is not is a private institution, it's, in, it's important to understand that since 1971 through 2022, the average rate of inflation was is 3.92%, okay? So what does this mean? I've talked about this in the past videos on the power of the rule of 72 and, and how, you know, you divide 3.92 into 72 and you realize like that's how long it takes for inflation to erode the value of our money. Now, this is the problem is that, you know, let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars in an account and you know, if, if two, two percent inflation means you basically only have the next year, $98,000 of purchasing power. Sure, you still have that $100,000, but it's only going to buy you $98,000 in goods from today. And so what we have to realize is that as inflation happens, we also need to have wage growth that uh, is equal to or less than the 2%. So ideally, in a perfect world, wage growth would be 2% plus, right? And, and if as long as we have that, well, then things are okay, right? But what happens is, unfortunately, we have, uh, especially over the past 20 years, we've had inflation has been going up at a greater rate 
than wage growth has. And so I'm not gonna get into details about like all the specific nuances and, and, and percentages and everything here, but just know that that's happening. And so when we look at inflation, the problem with inflation is that what, what happens is the target rate for the Fed is two. You can see obviously for the past almost 50 something years, um, you know, it's, it, they haven't been able to, uh, to match that. It's been double what that rate has been. And why is that the case? Well, because yeah, you, it's, I always say you can't put the toothpaste back into the tube, right? So you can't put inflation back into the tube once it comes out, right? So today we have 8.1% inflation at the time I'm filming this video right now. So that is, that is today's number. So here's the problem. Typically speaking, we're never going to have an 8% contraction, right? I mean, it hasn't happened really in, in almost 100 years that, that you know, we've had 8% contraction. So if we have an 8% contraction, it is going to be dire straits in our economy. So when we say we, we, we can't get the inflation back into the tube, that means what happens is if we have uh, a circumstance where like where we are right now, if we know that the, the, the goal is 2%, when we have an 8% year, that's basically like compressing, uh, or if we have about 2%, sorry, it's basically compressing what would be say about, uh, you know, three to four years of inflation compressed down to one year, right? So we start to feel this really bad. The gas gets more expensive. Uh, you know, groceries get more expensive, energy costs get more expensive, that trickles down. And unfortunately, wage growth doesn't come into the equation here. So if, if wage growth goes up by 4% right now, which is what's happening-ish in our economy, then it, it compounds, right? Like you really start to feel this. And so inflation, when it really comes down to it, we got to think about it on a, a year in, year, out, year in, year out basis. Typically, we don't really feel inflation. So it's out of sight, out of mind because wage growth is better or, it, or there's a, a marginal spread where it's not that negative. And so you don't really feel it. And so it's this like this growing gap between the wealthy and the middle class is actually caused by inflation more than anything else because you know, inflation has a greater impact on the middle and lower class than any other segment of the population because people that are living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, they start to feel this more when inflation gets a little out of control like what we have right now with the 8.1%. And so, so my encouragement to you is to just realize that, okay, you gotta think about this on a, uh, on a month in, month out basis, but now it's gonna go back to the conversation. I'm gonna link at the end of this, even though it's an earlier video in this series, just in case you're jumping into it now, or maybe you wanna go back and reference it again, the rule of 72, the 4% rule, and inflation. And when you understand those concepts and you combine them together, it starts to really have a significant impact on your decisions around why and how you save for retirement, why and how you invest in things. One of the ways to counter inflation is to invest or save and prepare and have uh, investing in inflation, inflationary protected assets um, to protect yourself. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean, you want to invest in, in hard assets is really what it comes down to. Now, um, real estate, it's one of the reasons I love real estate. Real estate is a, an inflation hedged asset. Um, as a lot of people look around and they go, hey, real estate's a great investment. It always goes up. Well, um, if you look at inflation from 1980 to today uh, and you look at the real estate market, the houses are, are, aren't necessarily worth that much more in actual nominal dollars. In as far as like when I mentioned the purchasing power, right? Houses aren't worth that much more from a purchasing power perspective, right? Compared to income, but they have gone up because of inflation, right? And so what's cool about investing in real estate is, yeah, you have other people paying off your mortgage if you're renting them, uh, but you, you know the, the housing value is going up correlated typically to inflation. Look at the last couple of years, inflation is kind of getting out of control, but real estate has outpaced it, right? And so that's a great way. A lot of people think gold is a good hedge to inflation. Um, you know, there's Bitcoin, um, you know, there's other things like that. Um, you can buy actual commodities. Um, these are all things that can be, you know, are good hedges 
to inflation. But I do believe that you need to make sure that your strategy, and this is why I wrote the book Cash Flow Hacking. I love real estate because it's simple. Everybody can get into it and you combine real estate because it actually provides cash flow. I'll just write CF for cash flow. And the, the cash flow investing is what allows you to like really have a, a, a good gauge on where you are, right? Financially. So if you're 40 years old right now or 35 years old and you have a 30 year window before retirement and that's your goal, it's really hard to understand like, am I, am I on track? And like, how do, you, how do you gauge it? How do you track it? Because you don't know how inflation is ultimately gonna, gonna rear its ugly head, right? Like nobody knew we were gonna hit eight point, well, a lot of people knew, but most people didn't know that 8.1% inflation was gonna happen today. And we don't know how long inflation is gonna be here. And, and we don't know, oh, based on how that happens, what are the consequences 30, 40 years down the road? Because compounding, we all talk about the power of compounding interest, I got news for you. This is compounding and it's really bad. I'll pause for that to go by. That's okay. Just pause for one second for the sound. So when we look at this, like it, it, it's crazy because that compounds against you, but we need it when we invest for cash flow, rather than thinking about how inflation impacts us and needing to get to some crazy number like $8 million saved in life, I know that right now I can set a metric of saying, I need to, I need to have $10,000 a month. That's what I need. And I'm thinking about it in today's dollars. So if I go out and I say, okay, I'm gonna, I can increase my cash flow by 200 bucks per month, year one. Okay, now I know that I'm 2% of the way there. Right? That's, I mean, it's simple. I'm 2% away towards my cash flow value or to my, my retirement needs based on cash flow, my financial freedom needs. And if I do this, now I can think next year, maybe I don't need 10,000. Maybe I need uh, 10,300 or 10,400. So now I need to know, like, I, I, if I get my cash flow up to 600 per month, year two, and my needs now are 10,500. Well, I, I, I can now gauge and I can subtract and I can have a barometer of, of really how on track for financial freedom and retirement and independence am I. And so once again, anything we measure improves. The problem is you can measure how much money you have, but you can't measure for the most part, the relevance and the importance of how much money that you have is in correlation to what are you going to need 30 years from now? That's the part that nobody knows. That's the part that I don't care what anybody tells you. Nobody's got a crystal ball. Nobody can tell you. And so you need to put yourself in a position where you're in control and you can make educated decisions. And the only way to do that, quite frankly, is to invest for cash flow. So that's what I got about inflation. That's what I got about it as far as how it relates to your life. Once again, if you have any questions about the details about how it actually impacts you, go back, watch the videos on the rule of 72 and the 4% rule. And when you do those together, it's going to make a huge impact on your decision making process with how you look at things. So that's it. If you have any comments, any questions, comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you go back. If you're just getting this for the first time, go back to the beginning of this series and watch and uh, make sure you subscribe. That way you get all the videos coming out in this series, because I'm telling you, these concepts that I'm teaching are the absolute basic financial concepts that I think everybody needs to understand. And you cannot make good financial decisions about your life until you understand these concepts. So that's it for now. Have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon.